Uh, yes, yeah, so the actions uh, and films were also um, fed into the strategic uh, planning process of uh, the key civic stakeholders in the county. And the, but one of the key features, I think, of all of the Wiltshire Voices films uh, is the explicit attempt to generate empathy, compassion and understanding. Um, because this sense of empathy has motivated people to action um, and it's really making a difference um, for the groups that we featured. Uh, and perhaps the most uh, encouraging outcome of the project um, is the emergence of the marginalised communities themselves. I mean, the sense of empowerment they've gained from the process um, and, and the positive outcomes that it has delivered. So, OK, that's a, a little diversion into the importance of inclusion, and I would stress it. Um, governance will not work unless it's inclusive. Um, and there's much, much more I could say about uh, that because it's one of the most rewarding aspects um, of community governance for me. But I guess time is now running out, so I will draw now to a conclusion. Um, so thank you for bearing with me so far. So we'll quickly rush through the last bit, OK? Uh, so I hope I've given you uh, a feel for the benefits that can be gained from inverting the traditional power pyramid and putting control back into the hands of uh, the people we all serve. Um, for me, this strengthens democracy, gives people a reason to engage and provides policymakers with the insight they need to inform critical public spending decisions. It unlocks social capital and it levers resources and, uh, at a time of economic uh, crisis. And importantly, the things I have described need no structural or legislative changes to achieve. These things can be achieved if the will exists. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? So, so finally, um, what has Wiltshire learned um, from 14 years of devolved governance experiments? Um, I think it's learned a lot. Um, we tried and tested many things. Some worked well, uh, some failed completely. Um, but for me, the main ingredients actually are pretty simple. So we need to remember that power exists outside of our civic halls. It's diffused through layered and overlapping community networks. Um, we need to let go of the reins and trust the communities we serve. Um, if we're going to make it, make it work, it really needs to have real powers uh, and real decision-making powers. Uh, it has to, we have to devolve real power to communities. We have to demonstrate our commitment through our actions and our resources. Um, and we, we, we all know that we make better decisions when those most affected have direct influence over the outcomes. We need to make things accessible with devolved structures designed around the needs of participants. And we need to reorganize our civic institutions to support devolved structures. Devolved governance is a facilitated approach. We need to invest appropriate resources to make it work. We need to commit to inclusion and work hard to listen to the missing voices. We have to understand that social capital is a gift and value those who give their time and resources so freely. We have to embrace technology and that will broaden our democratic participation. And we must all be part of the change if we want that we want to see and champion the power of devolved community governance. And if we all, if we can achieve this, then we are creating something better. We get better visibility, representation and accountability of civic institutions and elected politicians. We find new, more appropriate attitudes and behaviours developing in frontline staff and backroom staff and through our communities. We see that people are engaged and empowered, co-producing public goods. We find new ways of bringing people together to solve complex local problems by consensus. We achieve better results and a more appropriate allocation of resources. We are responding more effectively to the different needs of different communities. We are increasing investment in public goods through leverage of, cap of social capital. We are creating healthier, safer and more environmentally sustainable communities. And I think importantly, we are 
developing cohesive, inclusive, empathetic and resilient places. And that, for me, is a pretty good outcome, don't you think? So, thank you very much for listening uh, to that rather extensive and long con uh, presentation. Um, but uh, now I will switch back to normal um, presentation mode and uh, try and answer any questions you may have. So thank you very much for listening.